Okay, today I want to talk about uh, the hidden rapture signs. Because the scripture tells us that there would be signs of the times. And so I want to talk about the hidden rapture signs. Or or we could also say maybe that, that the signs that are being ignored. The signs that are being ignored. I want to take you to 1 Timothy uh, four one. I love to read this. Because uh, this is really today, uh, we're dealing with this uh, everywhere we go. And uh, it says here, but the Holy Spirit distinctly and expressly declares. Okay, I just want to stop right there. You know, if the Holy Spirit is distinctly and expressly declaring anything, I think we may want to tune our ears in and hear what he has to say. Do you think that's important? I mean, this is, I mean, we should put our thumb in this scripture because this is so very important. The Holy Spirit distinctly and expressly declares that in latter times, some will turn away from the faith, the faith, giving attention to deluding and seducing spirits and doctrines that demons teach. Now, we know today that this is rampant. Uh, in the church. Okay. This is the church. Uh, you know, I, w- I also want to take you over to Matthew chapter seven here in a bit, but let me turn over to Matthew chapter three. And I'm reading this out of the amplified version. Uh, Matthew chapter three, verse eight, it says to bring forth fruit that is consistent with repentance. Let your lives prove your change of heart. Let your lives prove your change of heart. You know, Jesus said the same thing in Matthew chapter 7. And I want to point out that today, the devil's greatest creation, which is a counterfeit creation, by the way, because he counterfeits everything that the Lord does. The devil's greatest creation today is this false church that he is inserted in. These wolves in sheep's clothing who are deceived and who don't want to hear the truth. And they go spewing out a different gospel. They're not teaching the word of God. And this is what was spoken here in, in 1 Timothy 4.1. That in the latter times, some would depart from the faith. The faith. Romans 10.17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So many today don't want to hear the word anymore. They don't want to hear the truth. You know, in Matthew 24 and Luke 17, Jesus spoke of a time. He said, as it was in the days of Noah and Lot, so it will be in the coming of the son of man. So what was Jesus referring to here? There were many signs in mankind, in mankind's behavior. And we can we can turn to Genesis and we can see what was going on in those days. You know, and we're seeing the same very thing today. We're seeing that same very thing. You know, Jesus in Matthew chapter seven, verse 15, beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are raving wolves. Now, this is a warning the Lord gave to us. The Lord knew that in the last days that there would be this, this, this false bunch of believers or professing bunch that would be inserted into the church. But they don't want to hear the truth. And, and like I said, this is the devil's greatest creation today. Is, is this church that's preaching this watered down message of the gospel. This church that has redefined, redefined the truth, redefined the message of the gospel, leaving things out. You know, something that's very popular today is, is, you know, I, I see a lot of folks. You know, I see this on, on, on certain pages, YouTube pages and, and whatever have you. Folks are saying that they're saved by grace alone. I mean, they're, they're specifically saying this. They're saved by grace alone. Grace only. Well, there's a problem with that because it doesn't say that anywhere in the scripture. Nowhere in the scripture does it say that we're saved by grace alone. But the enemy has so many deceived into believing this let me continue on because i you know i started in matthew 3 8 and it says to to let us uh, bring forth fruit that is consistent with repentance 
Let your lives prove your change of heart. You know, Jesus also said in Matthew 7, 16, you will know them by their fruits. Galatians 3, 11 says that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. For it is evident for, because we need to continue to read, because too many, too often folks stop right there and they don't continue to read. But we need to continue, we need to finish up that scripture. It says, for it is evident for that the just shall live by faith. Verse 12 goes on to say that, and the law is not of faith. Now remember that. I want I want you to make sure that you put your finger in that and and and, and remember that uh, Galatians three twelve that the law is not of faith. Another translation says that the law has nothing to do with faith. Okay, so I want to take you over to I want to take you over to James. Chapter one, uh, verse 22. See, we need to understand what biblical faith is. Ephesians 2, 8 says that we are saved by grace through faith and not of our own selves. It is the gift of God. So we need to understand what true biblical faith is, because this is one of the things that the devil has redefined today. The devil has redefined what true faith is. The devil has uh, low people to sleep and hoax them into believing that faith is just praying a prayer out of our mouth and then moving our own way. But the scripture says again in Galatians 3 11, that the just shall live by faith. Faith is not a one time prayer. We pray faith is not a one night stand. Faith is a lifestyle. And you know, that scripture is also in the new Testament multiple times. It's also in the, in the old Testament that the just shall live by faith emphasizing that faith is a lifestyle. You know, Jesus in Matthew 4, 4 says that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by the word of God. You should have a lifestyle in seeking God's truth, seeking his word. That also is in the New Testament. Uh, uh, it's also in Luke 4, 4. And it's also in uh, the Old Testament. So multiple times is that scripture in uh, in the Bible also. Uh, James one twenty two. Now I'm reading this still out of the Amplified Version, but you know, and James in chapter one and chapter two and on, James is speaking of biblical faith. What true biblical faith is, and again, remember Galatians three twelve, and the law is not of faith. And so I'm I'm, I'm making this point because. Uh, the, the actions that are produced by our faith in Christ are not works of law. The Bible calls that good works. There's a difference between good works and works of law. See, works of law are actions that are produced by trust in self. Self-righteousness, selfishness, actions that are produced from selfishness and self-righteousness. That's what works of law is. Works of law does not have faith in God. Works of law does not trust in the living God. Works of law trust in self. Believing that because of my abilities, I'm going to find grace or favor with God. That's what works of law stems from right there. It's not from faith in God. And unfortunately, uh, and sadly, when folks are teaching so many times on grace, they totally leave that out of their teaching. They, they, they don't, they don't tell people the difference between good works and works of law. And sometimes this is intentionally being done because there are certain folks who don't want to take accountability for their lifestyle. They don't want to take accountability for the fruits in their life. And this has everything to do with the, with the season that we're living in, the signs of the times. There are more signs in mankind than there are in the heavens. But yet 99% of what folks are talking about out there are signs in the heavens, but they're refusing to look into their heart. James one twenty two. but be doers of the word, obey the message and not merely listeners to it, betraying yourselves into deception by reasoning contrary to the truth. 
You know, this also sounds like uh, Galatians chapter six, where Paul goes on to say, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he reap. If we sow to the spirit, we'll reap everlasting life. If we sow to the flesh, we'll reap corruption and death. And Paul referring to the previous chapter in Galatians chapter five, he's laying out the difference between the works of the flesh versus the fruit of the spirit. And this is what Jesus was referring to in Matthew chapter seven. You will know them by their fruits. Now, folks who who tell us that our lifestyle means nothing, that our lifestyle has nothing to do with our faith walk. They are in deception that our lifestyle has nothing to do with our relationship with Christ. They are in deception. Folks who, who tell us that that grace covers a, a, a lifestyle of sin, a lifestyle of walking in premeditated sin, a lifestyle of relaxing in sin. No, let me take you to Jude uh, four. I like to read this because this, this is so clear because Jude is clearly addressing folks who are doing this. One of the purposes of the letter of Jude. And I actually want to pick up in verse three. Beloved, my whole concern was to write you in regard to our common salvation. But I found it necessary and was impelled to write you and urgently appeal to you and exhort you to contend for the faith. Which was once for all handed down to the saints, the faith, which is the sum of the Christian belief, which was delivered verbally to the holy people of God. For certain men have crept in stealthily. You know, as I read that right there, it make, it, it really takes me back to Matthew chapter 7, verse 15, where Jesus said, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. They creep in. They creep into the flock stealthily. They creep into the flock like they're one of us. But Jesus warned us. He said, You will know them by their fruits. You will know them by their lifestyle. You'll know the difference between them. Let me continue on here in Jude 4. For certain men have crept in stealthily, gaining entrance secretly by a side door. Their doom was predicted long ago. Ungodly, impious, profane persons who pervert the grace, pervert the grace, the spiritual blessing and favor of our God into lawlessness and wantonness and immorality and disown and deny our soul master and Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. Folks today are teaching, and this is so popular, folks today are teaching that because of grace, we can live whichever way we want. But that's not what First John 1, 6 says, that if we say that we have relationship with him and walk in darkness, that we are lying First Peter 2 9 says that we are a chosen generation, a holy people, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people. See, the sad thing about it is many Christians aren't peculiar at all because they fit right in with the world. We should be peculiar, peculiar. We should look different than the world because we've been called out of darkness into God's marvelous light. You know, I want to take you back to James Chapter two. And I want to point out here, I encourage you to read James. And again, the law is not of faith. That's Galatians 3.12. And James is speaking of faith, faith, what biblical faith looks like. So also faith, if it does not have works, deeds and actions of obedience to back it up. This is verse 17, James chapter two, verse 17. So also faith, if it does not have works, deeds, and actions of obedience to back it up by itself is destitute of power, inoperative, dead. James is speaking of faith. And again, I want to point out again, Galatians 3.12, and the law is not of faith. So James is speaking of of actions that are produced by faith. Hebrews 11 says that by faith, Noah moved with fear and reverence. Notice that. Because of Noah's faith, it produced action, what the Bible calls good works. By faith, Abraham obeyed God's word. Again, it produced an action. By faith, the woman with the issue of blood, she pressed through the crowd to get to Jesus. And notice that Jesus recognized it and called and said and called it faith. 
Woman, thou faith has, thou faith has made you whole. Jesus recognized her actions as actions of faith, not works of law. We need to get an understanding of what the Bible calls good works and not lump it all together. And sadly, that's what many of these grace teachers are doing. They're not preaching the whole message. Take you to James chapter two, verse 22. You see that and this is speaking of Abraham here. Let me ver- read verse 21 also. Was not our father, forefather Abraham shown to be justified, made acceptable to God by his works when he brought to the altar as an offering his own son, Isaac? You see that his faith was cooperating with his works and his faith was completed and reached its supreme expression when he implemented it by good works. Hello? His his. His faith in God produced action. And that's what the Bible calls good works. And we can also read that in in Ephesians 2.10. You know, I want to end this message because today we need to be so careful that we're not being lulled off to sleep by false teachers and preachers. That's why it's so important that we have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, that we allow the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us in our walk. You know, if you mention the word shacking up, You'll notice that if, if you're on YouTube or you have a channel, you'll notice you'll lose subscribers If because that's that's one thing people don't want to hear. I don't want to hear about shacking up. I don't want to hear about fornication. I don't want to hear about my sin. I don't want to hear about accountability. You know, I'm, I'm no better than anyone else. This the word of God challenges me like it does anyone else. But are we going to heed it and obey it or are we going to ignore it? And this is the thing here. We're living in a day where so many folks are ignoring the truth. They don't want to hear the truth. And this is the very sign of the end times. Many watchers don't realize that they themselves are a sign of the end times. A true watchman calls people to repentance. That's what a true watchman does. A true watchman just doesn't walk around and put a smile on their face and say positive things all day long. The scripture tells us to reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all with all long suffering and doctrine. I want to take you to uh, in the message with this Second Timothy chapter four verse three. For the time is coming when people will not tolerate, endure sound wholesome instruction, but having itching ears for something pleasing and gratifying, they will gather themselves one teacher after another to a considerable number chosen to satisfy their own liking and to foster the errors they hold and will turn aside from hearing the truth and wander off, wander off into man-made fictions and myths. They will wander off into these other things. Many folks are, are, are focused on comet eyes and comet eyes in this, comet eyes in that. A few months back, it was the Pope. M- you know, months before that, it was it was Elenin. It's always something to get our eyes off the truth, right? It's always something to get our eyes off of looking into our hearts. But you know, Jesus is looking into our hearts. He's not looking at lip service. He's not, not looking at the sticker on our car. He's not looking at the t-shirt we're wearing. He's looking into our hearts. Have you given the Lord sincerely and genuinely your heart? Or, or are you playing church? Do you just have the form without the power, as 2 Timothy 3, 5 tells us? There there are folks who are walking around, they have the form, they have a form of godliness, but they're denying the power thereof. They're denying the leading of the Holy Spirit in their life. They're denying the, the conviction, correction, and direction of the Holy Spirit in their life. And this is the sign of the end times here. This is the, the what I call the hidden rapture signs. The signs that many folks don't want to talk about because that requires an accountability in their walk. And that's something that they don't want. They don't want accountability. They want to play church instead. So I just challenge us today in this Christmas season. I just challenge us. Let us walk in faith and let us seek the face of Jesus and give him our hearts. Well, I just pray until next time, may the the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And may the Holy Spirit lead you and guide you in your walk with Christ.